Hello and welcome to this informational session all about the Power to Explore Student Writing Competition. And it's all about the competition for the 2024-25 school year. And it's a student contest and it's open to kindergarten through 12th grade students all across the nation. And uh, as in, in addition to being open to students, there is a really unique opportunity for um, adults like yourself to get involved, to help us spread the word about the challenge and to register as a judge to review these awesome entries that are going to pour in from across the nation. And uh, before I get it started, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a slide deck here, and I'm going to tell you all about this challenge. Uh, you might be wondering who I am. I am Deanne with Future Engineers. Uh, Future Engineers is a education technology company that specializes in student contests and challenges. And um, if I get it up here, yeah, you can see that's our logo. Um, so I'm the CEO of Future Engineers, and uh, we offer free students and contests for challenge, uh, free student contests and challenges. And um, all of those are operated online, and students can participate either at school under the oversight of their teachers, or they can register individually with consent from their parent. Either way, um, it's a really exciting opportunity for students to get involved, to learn a little bit more about space exploration and to submit their entries for the opportunity to win some awesome prizes. So um, this year's Power to Explore student writing competition, um, yet again is brought to you by NASA's Radio Isotope Power Systems. And uh, what is NASA Radio Isotope Power Systems? Well, for over 60 years, NASA has been using Radio Isotope Power Systems or RPS, uh, which are a type of nuclear battery to power spacecraft to some of the harshest, darkest, coldest, and farthest reaches of our solar system. RPS harnesses the heat of the natural decay of plutonium-238 to produce continuous electric power for operating spacecraft systems and scientific instruments that could be on board. So many, many NASA missions could not be possible or would be extremely limited without this special kind of power. So RPS offers the power to explore, and we are excited for more students to learn about that and to ultimately give us their ideas ideas of where they want to explore using this unique type of power. So this year's challenge is themed all around moons, and I'm going to go ahead and show you this launch video to give you a little primer of what this challenge is all about. So here we go. Our moon is full of possibilities. That's why after 50 years, NASA is heading back to stay. But with freezing temperatures, long lunar nights, and deep craters that never see sunlight, we could use a special kind of power to explore our moon. Meet radioisotope power systems. RPS is like a nuclear battery, using heat to generate electricity for years. It's great for exploring our moon, or far, far beyond, like the nearly 300 other moons throughout our entire solar system. RPS has powered missions near Jupiter's moon Io, where over 400 active, fiery volcanoes were discovered. On Saturn's dusty moon Titan, RPS will soon help us explore lakes, oceans, and rivers. And RPS was crucial for Pluto's moon Charon, where it recently powered a mission that discovered jagged mountains and huge canyons. Now, NASA wants to know what moon you would explore. We're challenging K-12 students to dream up an RPS-powered mission to a dark, dusty, or faraway moon. In your entry, share what you'd explore and how your unique skills will help achieve mission success. Great, so you saw the URL there, nasa.gov uh, slash power to explore. Um, there'll be a QR code at the end of the presentation where you can get to that website and all of those details. 
Um, and what is the challenge about? As you as you heard a little overview about it, it's all about moons this year. Um, so the challenge is really for students to learn all about NASA's radioisotope power systems, and then uh, to think about what moon they would choose to explore and to tell NASA all about it. So um, in that entry, uh, the students need to talk about what dark, dusty, or distant mission destination that they would choose and what would be those mission goals. Uh, they need to explain the importance and the advantages of using RPS specifically for that mission. How does that technology overcome the challenges of that extreme dark, dusty, or far away destination? And also they need to talk about their own personal power. So we want students to talk about their unique skills or their unique powers that are going to help achieve mission success. So it's a writing competition. So they'll type up that entry and then they will go online and submit that entry for the opportunity to compete for some awesome prizes. Of course, it's a competition. So there are judging criteria, which is on the website. Um, you can see the different point values associated with those criteria. Criteria. There are rules. There's, uh, you know, an FAQ that'll be populated if there's any questions that need to be answered. Um, and the program dates are very, very important. Um, so the challenge launched back in November, and entries are open until January 31st. Uh, so it's really important to get the entry in before that deadline. And then we will be judging entries. I mentioned you could be a judge. Hopefully, you'll help us judge. And then once those entries are all reviewed, uh, we will announce the semifinalists in March, the finalists in April, and the winners will be announced in May. Now, this challenge I mentioned is for kindergarten through 12th grade students, but it is separated into three competitive eight grade, uh, grade brackets. We have grades kindergarten through fourth grade, fifth to eighth grade, and ninth to 12th grade. And within each of those grade brackets, there will be semi-finalists, finalists, and a winner announced. So, what are these awesome prizes that I've been mentioning before? So even if you just submit an entry, if you participate, you get a prize. You get invited to a virtual event with NASA. And um, those events have been awesome in the past. And we've had um, some really wonderful speakers from NASA that talk about RPS and how they use that to explore. They also talk about their own unique powers and how that helps them with their jobs at NASA. Also, you also get a digital participation certificate. Um, and then within each grade bracket, there will be 15 semifinalists, so 45 total. And those semifinalists will receive an RP prize pack. And then the finalists, there will be three finalists in each age group, will receive a virtual session with a NASA expert. So um, a, a kind of a personal small virtual meeting where you get to interact with and meet um, some representatives from NASA, which is cool. And then our winners, there'll be one winner in each age group, will receive the grand prize of a trip uh, for themselves and a parent or guardian to NASA's Glenn Research Center in Ohio. And that is such a trip of a lifetime. Um, the students that have gone in the past have had the most phenomenal time and have learned so much. Um, so some really great prizes there to look forward to. Um, but, you know, like anything, it's an educational challenge. So it's important to know that on that site, there are all kinds of education resources. So if you're spreading the word, um, you know, telling others about this challenge, rest assured that any educator, or any student that goes to this website will have lots of education resources to help them on their way. Um, there are links and lessons um, where you can learn all about NASA RPS, all about Moon, um, did you know there were that many moons in our solar system? Um, so there's a lot of great, uh, a lot of great resources. Um, there's a slide deck, there's lesson plans, digital scavenger hunt, brainstorming, take home worksheet. Um, and we're actually working on more resources. So as those become available, they'll be put on that website that I mentioned before. Um, so a little bit more deep dive into these resources. There is a slide deck. Educators can use that to kind of present the challenge in their class um, or teachers can uh, or, or students can, you know, view that slide deck on their own and just learn more about the challenge and RPS. Um, there's also a lesson plan uh, there, which has a lot of great resources and it includes an activity, which is a digital scavenger hunt. 
um, uh, where, you know, students kind of bop around to some of these different um, online locations, uh, you know, per the lesson plan to learn about RPS um, and, and get everything they need to know to do this challenge. Uh, there is a take home worksheet. If you look on the right hand side there, that's a worksheet that talks about the challenge and students can start drafting their ideas. So maybe you have a science museum or an informal learning center around uh, where you live. Uh, this take home worksheet is actually a really great resource for them. You know, uh, if there's an aftercare program, they can give it and, and encourage students to participate, um, and, you know, at home on their own time. Um, and then as well, an important thing to point out is, you know, sometimes when you're doing a contest, it's hard to come up with that big, brilliant idea. We have brainst we have a brainstorming area uh, where there's kind of some, some, some different ideas, some different um, prods for students to really get those creative juices flowing and think about what kind of mission they might want to, to write about and uh, what kind of destination they might want to think about. So really great stuff. So how can you get involved? I think first and foremost, it's uh, help us spread the word about the challenge. Um, and there is a link to a flyer um, that you can download and print and you can share it with schools, with libraries, with after school programs. I don't know, your friend has a kid and maybe they want to participate. Um, so whoever you think would be a great fit for this challenge, we encourage you to spread the word. Here's a little glimpse of what that flyer looks like. It has a QR code on there that'll take you to the website. Um, it shows that great graphic and talks a little bit about, um, you know, what those prizes are. And then um, as well, I think if you want to just email others about this uh, opportunity, it's just really important to point them to the challenge website. Everything they need to know is there on that website. Um, if you go to this QR code here, uh, you'll get to that challenge website and you can uh, just spread the word. Uh, the other opportunity we have, as I mentioned earlier, is the opportunity to register to judge. And uh, if you go to this QR code, it'll actually take you to the Future Engineers Judge Registration uh, Portal, where you can um, uh, submit your information to register as a judge. And once you're registered as a judge, uh, we'll start you know, uh, judging after that January 31st timeframe and start reviewing all those entries. There will be thousands of entries that are submitted across the country. Uh, you won't have to judge all of them, but we will give you a subset of entries to review and you'll get this really nice judge portal where you'll get to see the entries. There will not be puppies playing soccer, but you'll get to you know, review the submission that comes in. You'll be able to put in your scores, put in um, some feedback, give some emojis, and um, really contribute to, um, you know, you know, giving back to STEM education and, you know, giving a boost to, you know, not only, you know, this review process, but giving really valuable feedback back to these students, which is great. So we encourage you to sign up as a judge to help us review all of these entries and, um, and uh, you know, ultimately help us choose who those semifinalists, finalists, and winners are going to be. But, you know, above all, um, you know, help uh you know with with stem education and um getting a glimpse of all these great uh destinations that students want to explore so as mentioned the challenge website there is on the left hand side uh where you uh, go to the website and learn about the challenge on the right hand side uh, that's the qr code link to register to judge i hope we see you uh register um, and we I hope you can help us uh, go through these amazing entries that are going to come in. If you have any questions at all, you can also contact support at futureengineers.org and we can answer any questions you have and provide any resources that you may need um, that we have available. And beyond that, I think that concludes our information session. Thanks so much for tuning in and we look forward to uh, seeing your involvement and your participation. Take care. Bye-bye.